بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله ويل بريزنت اور اكسبيرينس ان سيرجيكال ديبارتمنت موست اوف ماي سلايدز ويل بي ريبيتد بات اي جو كويكلي ثرو ات فينا ثرومبوم بليزما بروفيلاكسيس جار هوستال سيرجيكال ديبارتمنت اكسبيرينس Again, uh, vena thrombolism is a uh, collective team between the DVT and the pulmonary embolism, serious and the common, and it's associated with mortality for the patient. It's preventable, and we can reduce or prevent it by uh, two steps. The first one, uh, to identify the patient risk, and the second one, to give uh, an appropriate thromboprophylaxis. Thromboprophylaxis can reduce the cost and the uh, hospital stay to the hospital. There is many risk assessment modules uh, in the, our hospital, um, in the department of uh, surgery. We uh, applied Caprini risk assessment module score. There is a relation between, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Caprini is uh, from the University of Chicago, and he has many publications, and he's, uh, <coughs> most of that for vena thromboembolism, prophylaxis, and, and uh, risk, man risk uh, assessment uh, uh, patients. There is a relation between the Caprini score and the mortality rate. If the Caprini score is uh, two and less, the mortality rate is about 2.8 and increased if the Caprini score between 3 and 4 to 10 percent, but it jumped up to 24 percent if the Caprini score is 5 and more. Uh, our surgical department experience in uh, these situations, before uh, October 2020, uh, the risk assessment and uh, management is depending on personal experience and it was manual uh, documentation that attached to the file of the patient. After 10, 2020, uh, Caprini score was applied in our department and it was optional uh, at first, either to do personal experience or to do uh, Caprini score, then it become mandatory. Bring it to the electronic uh, Caprini score. It was uh, involved in the his system since a uh, long time before, but we started to uh, to be integrated as optional with the manual uh, form um, since uh, August 2021, and this is a time which uh, we translocate from the old hospital to new hospital. Uh, our department uh, did uh, many lectures and many training uh, video presentation to all surgical staff and uh, nursing staff. And uh, one year before, the electronic Caprini score was mandatory for all inpatient. Before admissions, uh, all inpatient uh, Caprini score is applied. It's paperless, electronic, and applied and fulfilled during the day of admission and after full assessment of the patient because we have many patients who uh, risk of bleeding. So after full assessment, we'll apply the, the risk of the patient and how to deal with it. How to do Caprini score, I thought... Uh, our colleagues before in the Faroni Hospital, they give uh, how to do it. So I go it uh, rapidly. In the accreditation, there is five questions. If there is a policy, we have a policy in the WhatsApp group and with the security, our security. And there is electronic form for risk assessment auditing up, trying to collect the data on scientific base, and the training programs, the, we have one-to-one uh, -one training program and lectures and uh, uh, videos that uh, all of our team is uh, informed about it. 
And I thought all of our team is know how to do uh, venous thromboembolism risk assessment. And uh, this one is a uh, small video about uh, one and a half. Uh, The last column is DVT column. Dark red signifies that DVT is recorded. Once we press on the DVT column, we open this page. The first page is Venus 1, in which we need to select the age of the patient, whether the patient is bedridden, the BMI of the patient, and what type of surgery are we going to perform, any recent events, any venous disease, any other chronic issues of the patient and if a female, whether she is on oral contraceptives or if she is pregnant. After entering all of that, we get a Caprini score. Now we need to go to the next page, that is Venus 2. The first table will give you the risk score and its recommendations. We can choose our treatment options as well as mechanical compression. If the patient does not require any prophylaxis, if she is a candidate for low risk of DVT, we can also select the risk factors for bleeding. And once everything is done, we need to save it. Once we record the Caprini score, the color coding will be applied. Thank you. Take care. And we collect the results, uh, our results for DVT by, from the radiology department by the patient for uh, uh, duplex lower limbs. We have two cases only, one case in January 2021 and the second case in February 2021. Uh, it's about 2% uh, of all the patients involved in this study. About BE, uh, we collect the data from the CT pulmonary angio. We have uh, three cases, one on the March of 2021, uh, and uh, there is two cases in the August, which is the month of translocation from the old to uh, new hospital. <coughs> And uh, on 2022, there is no uh, cases that recorded for uh, VTE. Our goal is to prevent VTE and to go to 0%. It's the aim of all our efforts for that. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Wael Nahrawi, medical specialist, Jahar Hospital. Uh, actually, our topic today is supposed to be about surgical department uh, experience in VTE prophylaxis, but I excuse them to introduce the, our, uh, where we are as a VTE uh, team in Jahar Hospital and show, show our experience in this. So it will be a short uh, presentation. I know it's difficult to come after all this condensed information in the, in the end of the day. And let's start. So in Jahra Hospital in 2019, we started to uh, implement our, to, uh, our journey. So our quality team actually started to contact our clinical department. Of course, before 2019, we have our own experience and we are implementing the VTE but actually it was not standardized at the level of the whole hospital. So it was, uh, you can say it was individual effort or at the best uh, say we can tell it was intra-departmental. So every department has it, his, their own policy with, where, which they are following. So we called uh, a member, we started to formulate our uh, VTE prophylaxis team and in January 2020, we have our uh, first uh, meeting. 
So to give an idea about why, why we make this team, we made this team actually to standardize the service, as I said, and to increase the awareness and to avoid any uh, pitfalls from this issue. So every member initially has shown their own experience from their department. Okay. Next, we assigned every member to discuss with his department internally and to start putting their own policy according to the VTE prophylaxis guidelines internationally. Every member actually did their best and already drafts was prepared from, every, from each department. Then actually in 2022, as we know, the whole world came to stop everything. So because of the COVID pandemic actually. So our, our hospital administration decided to hold all our team activities and all departments has to apply their own VTE prophylaxis. Actually, the drafts which was, uh, were already prepared, they followed it. Uh, was the most, of, most of our clinical department followed these drafts. And, uh, but our quality team, they are, mashallah, over uh, hard worker and over acting. So uh, they uh, followed, uh, they tried to do some statistics to show the importance of our team and what we are doing for. One of them was this uh, statistic showing the, um, when we are implementing the VTE prophylaxis in acute stroke patient in medical department. So just to, you can see if we only raised the awareness of VTE before we didn't implement the policy yet, the VTE prophylaxis jumped from 74.4 in 2019 to 98.6% in 2020. So again, we came in 2022 after the pandemic. We decided to resume our team activity and complete our task. Small group meetings were held because uh, some logistic problem. Some members are resigned already somewhere in long vacations and this issue. So small group meetings were held initially with the help of our quality team due to some logistic problems regarding replacing some of our members by new ones to complete our task. So in the second half 2022, we brought back our drafts and started to work on it. So again, in 2023, we have our full team. So we had our full team activity back and accelerated the policy of uh, finalization with our hematology team, which finalized and approved these policies. February 2023, we got our final policies for each department, from medical, surgical, ICU, orthopedic, and obstetrics. After approval from our hospital administration and head of all departments, we started implementing them on our patients admitted to clinical wards. Now we we want to shift from the paper paper era to the electronic era. So we contacted the IT department to apply this into our uh, health system to make it. Actually, it is there on the health system, but implementing it electronically was left to the individual by themselves. So the admitting doctor has the option to make it on the electronic system or no. But now we are working to make it obligatory during the admission process itself. So the admitting doctor has to implement it. By, uh, he, the admission process will not be completed, except he makes this process of VTE risk uh, assessment and what he will do, what is the plan for VTE prophylaxis. Now we have uh, one of our achievement actually already we have achieved that we agreed to open what's called thrombosis clinic. This clinic actually we already launched it on the 1st of March, this March okay, already and it will be attended by our fantastic hematology team with Dr. Mohammed El Hajri. Okay, this we saw it is very important to make it and because of the after admission, after discharge, what is the long term, what is the follow up, what is the education and uh, usually it was before these patients were referred to the hematology clinic and the hematology clinic was overwhelmed with big number. So we make it separate to improve the service and to make better follow up and to ensure good compliance of this patient. 
So what is the indication? Who, is, who are the patients who will go to this thrombosis clinic? Actually, they will receive the unprovoked VTE. Every patient with thrombophilia, any recurrent VTE, any patient with failure of anticoagulants, they will go there. All pregnant lady with VTE, and any complicated cases with controversy between thrombosis and bleeding, and this, you know, these cases uh, we are seeing. So our now now our situation is we finalized all policies from all departments. We are working to make it electronically to be obligatory for in the admission process, and we are continuing our learning and education program for our staff. We need every member in our hospital to be an ambassador of VTE team, okay, to be aware of this. And uh, lastly, get the feedback and make a better performance for our team for, our, for more better practice, inshallah. Thank you, and Ramadan Karim.